Shalom everyone. Um, I want to read Psalm chapter 71 verses 10 and 11 with you. For my enemies have spoken against me, and those who watch for my life have consulted together, saying, God has forsaken him, pursue and seize him, for there is no one to deliver. And again, let's read in Psalms 3, verse 2. Many are, are saying of me, God will not deliver him. You see, guys, I want you guys to realize that the wicked, I'm talking about people that are reprobates, they are very well aware when the Most High is on your side. When you are anointed, because when you are in Christ Jesus, you have the anointing of Christ. When you are anointed, they will feel and notice the presence of the anointing. And they know very well that if they come against you, that there might be some serious consequences for them. And now, you might think that knowing that the Most High Elohim is on someone's side and is on someone's behalf, you would think that this would prevent negative people from attacking you. The contrary. You see, in Scripture, you will find often that when people, when the enemies of the Israelites heard that a king or a prophet was anointed, that is on the receiving of that news that they planned an attack. For example, David was anointed king three times. I believe it was around the second time that he was anointed king. When the Philistines heard it, they came against him. You see, the problem, the thing was, David was already anointed. So why did he come against David? Normally he was anointed. Because you need to understand this, folks. Some people don't want to change. They don't want to repent. They will have to endure and acknowledge how debased they've become by their own efforts. And they don't want to do that. So they dedicate themselves, they dedicate their whole existence into fighting others, to prevent others from receiving what they have rejected. You understand? And think about this, folks. Your enemies are waiting for a moment that God is not on your side anymore so they can attack you and do whatever they want with you. That's what they are waiting for. And the thing is, folks, we are under the new covenant in Christ. That moment will not come. I'm talking about those that agree with Christ and persevere with him. And you, you, let, me, let me make this clear unto you. Some of you are thinking if there are enough plagues and enough consequences for evildoers, they will back off and leave me alone. It's not true. Often it's when there is the strong deliverance on your behalf, it's often then that they become more and more enraged. You see, I'm telling you, you believers who are listening to my voice now, this is a message for you. There are people that are going to act and and behave psychopathic, insane and out of their mind towards you. After they see the manifestation of your prayers, fasting, declarations, decrees and commands in the spirit. It's when you have results, when you have manifestations, it's then that wicked people are are losing it. When you don't have manifestations and all of that, and when they still can have advantage over you, they don't even bother with you. But the moment you have manifestation, it means that you are capable of eliminating them. It also means that there is retaliation for everyone that comes against you, and they don't want that. So it's two choices. Either they live with the yoke of your presence, or they try to destroy you, enter your yoke, 
do so that they can preserve their delusions. And most wicked people will choose the second option, even when they know that they cannot win, even when it will cost them everything, they are so insane and so out of touch with reality that they would prefer to fight against you and to, with that, ruin their own lives, the lives of their families and all people around them, than having to acknowledge how debased they've become by their own efforts and giving up and receiving Christ. To do the second is very humiliating unto them, and so they want to avoid that at no, at all costs. So listen, there are going to be folks that will dedicate their whole lives, their whole health, and everything they have to bring you down. I'm talking to believers now who are in agreement with Christ, who are having manifestations, you see? Because listen, every time you manifest a prayer, a decree, or whatever, there comes to retaliation from both the demonic realm as from the as from humans who are antichrist. They will retaliate. They've always have done. Does this mean you have to be afraid of them? No, absolutely not. Just realize it will happen. But there's also another side of this. And I shared this post a few days back. Hold on a minute. Yes. It's this one over here. Wait, let me enlarge it. Hold on, come on. Yes. Because often, also in preachings, people focus on the dangers instead of focusing on the promise. Now, I revealed and talked about the dangers, but there's also a great promise in this. It's almost done. Uh, meanwhile, I'll keep on talking. Because, listen guys, you need to understand this. If the wicked would lay down and leave you alone, just like an invasive wheat, you would grow everywhere. Including in what they consider their personal space. Something they, that doesn't exist. But according to them, it exists and they are willing to use violence and harm to protect their imaginary space that they call their privacy. It can be, for example, that you are growing and becoming wealthy and you are able to feed the hungry and the poor. By doing this, more people will be relieved from poverty and by people being relieved from poverty, people will be able to um, develop further. Some as artists, some as uh, some in engineering, some in uh, teaching. And by doing this, the influence of negative people will decrease. So, to protect their so-called negative influence, they, I mean, to protect the negative influence, which they call their private space, which is basically their negative influence, they are going to fight you with everything that's in them. But, when you, and I'm saying this based on scripture, when you return all those spells, all of those hexes, and all those, let me say, when you, return all those accusations against them wow well, this is what will happen what you see on this picture here well especially a gif image you see a footballer running away because there's this axe that's following him and as you can see there's no one holding the axe so there's something supernatural that's coming onto him so he's running for his life for his life okay now i want to go to um, Isaiah chapter, <coughs> I'll do it here, this is much better, um, well, you know what, I will, I will just say it, in Isaiah chapter 54, there is a verse that is very, very well known among you, and it reads, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up in judgment thou shalt condemn. Now, you need to, you know, you have to agree with this. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It did not say that no weapon will be formed. It did not say that no weapon will be used against you. It only says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So the goal of the 
goal that your enemies had with those weapons, whether they are accusations or whether they are real physical weapons, it will not prosper. But also, every tongue that rises against me in judgment I shall condemn. Now, what this means is the following. Because listen, every weapon formed against you, and I'm going to be very plain here, every weapon formed against you, every attack against you begins with an accusation. It begins with a negative agreement against you that people speak out. Because the moment they speak out their negative agreements against you, they establish a satanic covenant against you that will activate demons to operate to, uh, against you. You see? So not only is it necessary that the physical attacks are prohibited, all those accusations which are basically negative agreements they made against you, they all have to be disgraced, nullified, and um, they have to be returned. You see? You see, what you can do, what the Bible also says, is that every tongue, every tongue that rises against you in judgment, so everyone that has negative judgment uh, about you, that agrees negative about you, the Bible says you shall condemn it. All those you shall con you will condemn all those accusations. How do you do this? Basically, by agreeing with this, what the Scripture is saying, by speaking out, and also by, by by literally commanding every accusation, every arrow of the enemy to return back to its senders. Every arrow it means every attack, every negative opinion, every choice against you, every action against you. In the name of Jesus Christ, command them. To return back to their senders. When you're doing this, guys, this is the consequence. All those negative agreements, all those accusations, all those harmful wishes, all those actions against you, they will return back to their senders, and wow, they will not be able to escape from it. You see, some people, some people will. Let me just let me go to. The book of Acts with you. Um, I hope um, you know this laptop only has two gigabytes of memory, so maybe that's why it's acting that that crazy. The story of Ananias and Sapphira. Many of you are aware of it. They try to enter the community of believers, and they lied about the amount of money they've made by the by the sell by the sell of their property, and the man who lied died. Then the wife came lied also, and she fell down to the to, to the ground and died. Now Ananias and Sapphira they were not, not believers; they were pagans that tried to harm the church, that tried to harm the body of Christ. So. What happened here was that Apostle Peter, who was the pastor of the first um, Christian church, he basically decreed and declared the doom of the persistent enemies of God's people. Now, I'm going to read this with you. Acts chapter 5, verses 1 till 11. I'll read from the King James Version. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Spirit, to Holy Ghost, and to keep back part of the price of the, hand, of the land? While it remains, was it not thine own? And of it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on them that heard these things. And the young man arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter 
search on onto her, tell me whether you sold the land for such much? And she said, yeah, for such much. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and healed of the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the, the church and upon as many as heard these things. Okay. What this is basically making clear is, let me go back to Psalms 71 verses 10 and 11. The people, I mean, in this case, Ananias and Sapphira and also other enemies, they try to get rid of the Lord, basically. And what they were doing was they had this weapon that they tr tried to use against the Church of God. However, it didn't work. But what happened was is that Peter, the apostles, the pastor Peter, Peter, he decreed, declared the in agreement with Scripture that every tongue that rises against them is, is condemned. He de decreed and declared this, and also he declared justice. And what happened? Both attackers died. You see? Was this the only instance that something like this happened in, in Scripture? No. I'm telling you, uh, believers, you need to agree with the gospel because some people, they will only leave you alone when they die. Some people will only leave you alone when they are dead. They will not leave you alone as long as they are alive. As long as they are alive, they will continue to attack you, to make negative agreements against you. Because, listen here. Listen, listen here, what does the scripture say here? Then Peter said, Antor, how is it you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? So they made an agreement. Guys, it's time to send all negative agreements. Let me say, send all arrows of the enemy back to its senders. Some of them will keep coming back, keep coming back. That's their problem. You see, you... Are a child of the Most High God, so agree with the Most High God. That being said, you all, I'm out. Be at peace.